Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will cover the basics of the functionality of a stepper motor and also a more specific type of a stepper motor, the variable reluctance stepper motor. To get started, we have a setup like this. We have a permanent magnet in the middle in the so-called rotor, the part of the motor that will actually spin. And on the outside, the so-called stator, we have a couple of coils or solenoids arranged around the rotor in the middle. So to get started, we are creating magnetic poles inside the solenoids by having the current flowing through the coils in one way or another. In case this concept is confusing to you, make sure to cover the basics of solenoids and electromagnets in the first place. So to force the stepper motor into a clockwise rotation, we have to activate the horizontal solenoids. Since the opposite magnetic polarity is attracting each other, we have to create a south pole on the right hand side and a north pole on the left hand side. Due to this magnetic attraction, we will force the permanent magnet in the middle into a rotation. So the magnetic attraction is causing a force that's then resulting in a rotational movement. Once we arrive in this horizontal position, the rotor in the middle will align perfectly in this horizontal position and it will stay there. Unless obviously we keep repeating the process and now activating the magnets on the vertical axis, deactivating them again, activating the horizontal ones again, but this time in reverse current and so on. So we can create a full rotation like this. If we repeat this process very fast, this will result in a smooth rotation. But we also have the option to not do this process very fast and do it actually step by step and therefore creating steps of 90 degrees. So the motor will rotate in 90 degree steps and that's basically why it's called a stepper motor. We have to keep in mind that this whole movement is forced and there's no feedback loop. So in case the load on the motor is too high and we can't make a step, the motor itself will not be aware that he missed this step and thereby the position we are aiming towards may be faults. So the motor may think that we're already at the first 90 degree angle, but actually we are still at zero degree at the top. So if you want to make sure to actually move towards a precise position, you would need to have a feedback loop externally attached that's then letting know your control unit that the motor is actually misaligned and actually adding another step or let's say trying again to do this step. But in case your loads on the motor are not too high, the motor should always move to the exact position that you request them to move. So to get to a specific position, you need to basically tell the motor how many steps he's supposed to make. In our case, we can only get to four different positions, top, right, bottom, and left. Or with other words, zero, 90, 180, 270, and again, 360 degrees. So 90 degrees are not really a great position or a high resolution to move to a specific position. To improve this, we could add more solenoids but there's actually a more easy way to do this, or let's say a trick with which you can easily cut your step size in half. And this process is called the half step. So moving on to the half step control, we have basically the very same hardware setup, but we have a bit more sophisticated ways to control the solenoids. So starting with the fixed position at zero degree, again, we have the soft pole at the top solenoid and the north pole at the bottom solenoid. To enable the first step, we are now not turning off the first pair of solenoids, we're actually turning on the second pair of solenoids while keeping the first set of solenoids on, thereby forcing the rotor to perform a half step. So it's kind of stuck in the middle. But that's exactly what we want. Because if we take a closer look on the position of the rotor, we can see that the middle of the north pole here of the permanent magnet in the rotor is exactly as far from the top solenoid as from the right hand solenoid. So the forces that are basically attracting the north pole to the top and to the right hand solenoid are exactly the same. So we could say that we established a virtual south pole exactly in between the two solenoids. Obviously the same thing happens on the other side, on the opposite side, where we have a virtual north pole. So with the same set of hardware, we now just created a 45 degree step instead of a 90 degree step. So by switching from a full step to a half step operation, we can double our precision or our resolution. To perform the next step, we will go back to the classic mode and basically deactivate the vertical pair of solenoids and only activate the horizontal pair of solenoids and then thereby completing the second half of the step, another 45 degrees, summing up to a total of 90 degrees as before. 
well this is already quite an improvement and there are stepper motors operating in this mode the hardware configuration might be a bit different and maybe there are actually more solenoids maybe twice or three times more solenoids to get down the step size to a couple of degrees that's actually kind of useful but mainly this is to demonstrate the basics of a stepper motor if you're looking for more precision of smaller step sizes so higher step resolution you can switch to a variable reluctance stepper motor and that's looking a, a very different from what we saw just now again we have a bunch of solenoids arranged outside in the stator and in the middle in the rotor we have something very different now we have a kind of a cork which is actually not a permanent magnet it's simply a ferromagnetic material I will not go into the details what a ferromagnetic material is, but basically it's just a piece of metal. There are a bunch of materials classified as ferromagnetic, so it's basically a material that can be magnetized, but for us more importantly, the property of this material is that it's always attracted to magnetic fields. So it always tries to be in the middle or the densest magnetic field available. So the way this stepper motor works is it's having basically a different amount of solenoids on the outside in the stator than it has like little pins in the inside on the rotor. Thereby the little pins can never align perfectly with the solenoids on the outside. So some can align perfectly but not all at the same time. So in case the top solenoid and the bottom solenoid are activated, they will always be activated as pairs, we will have a perfect alignment of the little sparks or the tooths of the cork with the solenoids at the top and at the bottom. So we are always aiming for the perfect alignment between the solenoids or the pair of solenoids and the tooths of the gear running in the middle. And again, this is due to the ferromagnetic properties of the gear in the middle, which is always trying to be in the center of a magnetic field, like always being attracted towards a magnetic, magnetic field. And the magnetic field is the densest or the strongest exactly on the aligned or in the middle between those two solenoids and those little tooths will try to perfectly arrange into this dense magnetic field. So moving on, the question is, what is the next pair of solenoids that we should activate to do the next or the smallest step possible, because that's what we're ultimately aiming for. To determine this, we can check quickly the orientation. If we would activate this pair of solenoids, we can see that the distance here is actually quite big between the tooth that was just now aligned and the new center of the magnetic field and the distance between here is quite small. So what would happen? We would cause a rotation anti-clockwise, but we are aiming for a clockwise rotation. So that's definitely not the position we are aiming for. So moving on to the next pair of solenoids, if we would activate this one, we can see that the distance between the center of the magnetic field and the tooths next to each other is basically exactly the same. So the gear in the middle wouldn't move at all, or maybe being pushed in one or another direction depending on some vibrations or a little bit of a misalignment. So that's also nothing we want to have. Moving on to the next and thereby last possible position, we can see that the magnetic field between this pair of solenoids would basically cause the tooth of the gear to snap a little bit into a clockwise rotation to align perfectly with the magnetic field between this pair of solenoids. So that's exactly what we would do. We would deactivate the previous pair of solenoids, activate the new pair of solenoids, and we will cause a rotation of the gear in the middle, a very, very small rotation. So this rotation was only 15 degrees. So this variable reluctance stepper motor can do steps of 15 degrees each. Obviously in real world applications, you would have much more complex versions of this with much more solenoids or much more tooths of the gear in the middle and so on and so on. But I hope you understood the basic concept of a stepper motor and also a re variable reluctance stepper motor by this example. I want to mention that those are not the only types of stepper motors. Actually, the most common type of stepper motors are hybrid stepper motors, which are much more complex and diff more difficult to understand. So if you're interested in those topic and you want to have a video about a hybrid stepper motor, please make sure to drop a comment below and let me know and get ready for an advanced video. Until then, I hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.